What's going on guys? Junior's Fishing Company with a deer hair jig today. So I've got a 3 8 ounce, just a VMG, VMC, like a ball head jig or whatever. And I actually, I dipped it in white do it mold paint. And then I dipped it in, I can't remember what orange color this is, fluorescent red or something like that. And then I just stuck new eyes on it. One tough thing about doing this, it makes the bait look, the head look even bigger, and a 3 8 ounce lead head jig, in my opinion, is already really big. And so it makes the jig look a lot bigger, but you can dip any colors that you want. So a lot of jigs that I buy are pretty standard black and white jigs like this. Cool painted jigs like a Sixth Sense swim jig or the some Berkeley ones. I mean, there's a lot of really cool colored painted jigs out there. You don't want to paint over those, but you buy a 10 pack of these VMC jigs and I like to kind of mess around with colors. I'm going to do another video. This is an olive one and then I've got a brown right here. So it, you know, it's like six bucks for one of these paint little, it's like little one ounce things, but they last forever. And so this is orange. I'm using red thread. I'm going to have a lot of chartreuse and orange in this bait. This is going to be a super bright bait. Uh, I don't do a ton of like crazy out there colors. I prefer white, black, gray, natural colors, gold, and things like that. But you got to have everything in your box, right? So the tail of this bait is going to be Arctic Goat. And I want this bait to be between four and five inches, maybe closer to five. That's right at about my material clip. And this is going to be a really thick, this is a really heavy jig, in my opinion. Three eighths is a pretty heavy jig for walleye fishing, unless you're in 25 feet of water. I mean, if you're fishing in 10 feet of water, this thing's going to plummet to the bottom. So I don't throw a ton of really heavy jigs because I don't fish super deep primarily just because a lot of the lakes I fish the structure isn't I mean they, they usually don't run that deep but you got to have everything in your box so I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna push it all the way around but I'm not gonna like feed it through my hook back and forth because I don't it this is this might get a little wrapped up in there and so if I, I want to keep a lot of the stuff on top just to try and prevent that a little bit. And then I'm going to actually, I've got 210 red here. I'm going to put a little bit of super glue down just for safekeeping. Just so that I can stay. So the flash I'm going to do in this is holographic flashaboo sun rise or sunset um, I can look up at the description below sunrise and sunset or sunset so I've got I just blended these two colors together it's kinda hard, hard to really perfectly blend arctic goat just because it's so crazy thin I'm gonna come right past my arctic goat and I'll put my first stack of hair in and again, this is just, there's a lot of different colors of chartreuse. There's like really green chartreuse and then there's chartreuse that's kind of yellow. But this is more of a yellow chartreuse, which is fine because I've got a lot of chartreuse baits. So I'm going to put this decently far back in my tail, not crazy far. Get that trimmed up, cord up my thread. And this bait is not going to be super flary because the tails I used, like this chartreuse tail, so this is the chartreuse tail, there's almost no flare in any of this. It's super thin hairs, and so there's not a lot of trapped air. And so I'm not going to, this isn't going to be a super puffy bait. Make sure that I got some of that glue off. So I'll just come in here, can get two good wraps. And then I'm just going to spin it around, work my way, and this is something I can kind of feed onto the other side just to kind of even it out. 
that hurt to go back over there. Just spin it 360. Make sure that it's as even as you want it to be. And I'm just gonna good tight wraps right there. And then I'll come down. I'm gonna do my next one, and then I'll do my flash. If you do your flash too early, unless you do multiple layers of flash, you got to be careful because you'll bury it and the deer hair can cover it. Not, not quite like Marabou. It'll show through for sure. But So this is going to be shorter than that one, but not by a ton. And I can kind of get some of these longer hairs out of here because that can kind of screw up your measurement. Just about right there. And you don't want to use your Super Primo deer hair on jigs like this because you're going to end up cutting a lot of it. And if you use, if you, I mean, if you only have one tail in chartreuse, you've only got one tail in chartreuse. But if you have multiple tails of a color and you know you're tying a four inch jig, use the shortest hair you can get away with and save that really good stuff for an 8 inch jig or what, however big you're going to tie. If you just tie small stuff you don't have to worry about it but I tie a lot of bigger stuff and that's when if you've got good primo tail that's when you want to use it because the less that you cut the better. So just a little two cents on my part. So I've got plenty of room for some flash. This sunrise or sunset, it's, it's just golden red. So really it's not, if you have red and, and gold, you can make it yourself. I'll taper it out and I want it to come decently far down. And I'm gonna tie it right by where my bucktail is. I don't wanna to go too far towards my head because I need all the space I can get on my head for my last stack. So I'll get that down with a couple tight wraps. Trim that off. And then the other side of my stack of flash will be already tapered. And I can kinda measure that out split it a little bit on my hook and just fold it right on top and I'm not gonna all of this stuff by my head is just gonna be waste I'm not gonna put too much flash I'm not gonna put too much flash in here but I will put down a little bit of super glue to make sure that these follow the direction that I give them. It's really slippery stuff. And then I'm going to get up to my head. I'm going to let this dry first and we will finish this jig off. Alright, so the glue is dry. I've got my last stack, which is super short and super thick. You have to use a lot of hair. When you cut off the hair and it's this long and you cut it halfway, you lose all of that short stuff. So you gotta end up kinda either restacking or just taking a big chunk. Even for a small jig like this, I use quite a bit of hair. And I'm just gonna go pretty short on this one, but I'm gonna cut it not as short as I think. I've got a nice little chunk of extra hair. And I, I, when I use the razor blade on this, I don't know. I dip this a few times in just water-based head cement. So I'm hoping I don't get a lot of chipping. But sometimes you do. I just hate when it chips. So I'm going to get all of that down. 
just spin it. Get it 360 around my hook. And then I'm going to end up trimming this. Let's see if there's any flare. There's a little on this. This was from the very, very bottom. But there still is, I mean, there's another jig that I'm going to be doing here. And uh, there's so much air in those ones. But you can kind of see, there's, there's some nice flare in this. So what I'm going to do, make sure that it's even. I'm going to work my way up to the head. And then I'm going to trim it. But in a couple of the videos, I fast forward through this trim. If you've watched closely, you've seen, it might have been the last one, I can't remember, but my thread broke. I hit my thread with my razor blade, and it didn't, nothing happened. And so, you want to get some really tight wraps on there, and then I chip at this with this razor blade pretty freely. I'm not worried about this thread, because I just did a dozen tight wraps on here, and it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to get off as much of this hair as delicately as I can, and we'll finish it off. Alright, so this ended up being about five inches, but it'll fish a lot smaller. I mean, when this starts, when this sinks, all of this will collapse down. What I was just thinking of, I don't know if I've ever really said this, is sometimes you have to choose between a ton of hair. Like, this is kind of a lot of hair for a deer hair jig, but it's tapered out, so I think it's going to swim a lot better than you'd think. With this tail, it's going to swim really really well because this is a lot lighter of fibers than this deer hair. If you have a store-bought tail it's usually just one length hair chopped on to the head of the jig wrapped and finished off and so all the hairs are all the exact same size so you do kind of just get that it's like a lump but if you really want like a traditional fly, like when you're stripping it, if you want it to kind of swim, that's why a lot of fly tires always stress using less materials, the least amount you can get away with. But when you're tying on a 3 8 ounce jig, you kind of have to find that balance of getting a proper taper, putting a different material for the tail. That's why a lot of these deer hair jigs I have arctic goat for the tail because it's going to swim better on a, I think, in my opinion, on a heavier jig like this. But nice little super bright deer hair jig. A lot of flash. Chartreuse and Orange. Junior's Fishing Company. Juniorsfishing.com. Like and subscribe. See you on the next one.